In that case, I want my reservoir pressure to be above 10 times that. I want it to be above 3,000. If I've got 600 pound volume pressure, I'm only getting half or so of the production that's available. Sometimes gas does not is not being produced out the casing annulus. In that case, all this liquid down here is a solid column with no air air bubbles in it bubbling up through it. When you go out to shoot a well for somebody and demonstrate your equipment, they always take you to the hardest well on the lease, I've noticed over the years. This well made 360 barrels a day, 1,800 barrels of water, and 5 million cubic feet of gas. It's going to be a terrible, difficult well to shoot. I mean, when they said that, it's going to be terrible. And, I mean, he's giving me one you can't shoot. You know, when I shot it, well, the first thing I noticed when I went over to the well was that the casing pressure was zero. It's less than flow line pressure, which means there's no gas coming up through the liquid and bubbling out. So I've got a solid liquid column here. The pressure is so much at the bottom of the well that the oil, water, and gas were all being combined and held in a single phase, and there was no free gas coming up the casing end. She was real easy to shoot, real easy. In a well with a gaseous column, it's equal, the bottom of pressure is equal to the casing pressure plus the gas column pressure plus the oil column pressure, or whatever fraction of oil is present there. In a well like this, you've got gas bubbling up through the liquid, causing it to be high. We wanted, we, Tony, and down at the university, long, long time ago, we did a lot of work in the, in the laboratory there. We had clear casing, clear tubing. We did a lot of work on bubbling gas through liquids and measuring what was going on. And we measured it in the lab, and when we took the lab data to the field and applied it to the field, we saw that the numbers were greater than actually existed in the well. They had to be. So we had error taking our lab data and going to the field with it and, and using it. So we thought, well, good night. Why don't we just, except it was expensive, why don't we just go to a well and measure what the gradient is? So we took a well like this and put a back pressure valve on it, and we would push it, the liquid level, down to different depths. And then we'd record that data. This guy Walker out in California in the 30s, this paper was written in 1936. He said that when you depress it down like that and measure the pressure at these different levels, that you will get a straight line. And I mean, that's dumb. It couldn't be a straight line. The liquid down at the bottom has to be more dense than the liquid at the top. I mean, it's got to be, except it ain't, you know. I mean, when you measure it, he was right back then. We went to the field, measured lots of wells, hired, hired a graduate student from the University of Texas to go to the field and sit out there in the sun and measure the, the pressure at the top of a well that had a lot of fluid in it. Then we'd increase the back pressure, push it down, still vent gas out at the top. We're still making the same production. We just had more tubing, more casing pressure, and we'd get some data there. And then we'd push it on down right near the pump and see what our bottom hole pressure was then. And we recorded that data, and here's our casing pressure. We'd go up and stabilize, go up and stabilize. And here's our tubing pressure, our liquid level it was at this level, pushed it down to this level, pushed it down to that level. And we calculated that up and we got a straight line, just like C.P. Walker did in the 30s. But this gave us the gradient of the column with so much gas bubbling up through it. So we had a relationship, and we did this on lots of wells, we had a relationship of when you bubble so much gas up through an oil well, not through some clear tube in the lab, but through an oil well, what is the gradient of that column? And we came up with this curve, and this is called the echometer S curve, and it shows that in various sizes, areas of space, be it casing annulus, whatever it is, that when you, ver when you 
flow certain amounts of gas through it, it aerates the liquid to some extent. There was another fellow who did this a long time ago with heavy crude out in California. His name was Gilbert. And here's his data points, and he was a well respected person, but he did it in heavy crudes. And one of the things that Lynn's working on now is trying to get data together and get the time together to show that, and in our program we'll put in, we will probably someday have in there, that if you have a heavier crude, then the gradient's going to be a little heavier. And if you'll put the gradient into the software, it'll out automatically calculate it for you. It's not in there now, but he's working on it. One of the tests they do in Canada a lot, when you shoot a well and get a high fluid level, they just close the casing valves in and just wait till you push the fluid level down. And the casing pressure builds up because there's no place else for the gas to go. It pushes the liquid level down. Where does it go? It goes into the pump. Well, if it goes into the pump, what happened to the stuff that used to be coming in out of the reservoir that went into the pump? Well, it slows it down. So you, how do you slow it down? Well, you increase the pressure at the bottom of the well. So you continue to, to increase the pressure at the bottom of the well and reduce the inflow from the reservoir. And so when you plot that data that you get, you get a much higher number than actually exists. So leaving the casing valve closed in for an extended period of time and pushing the fluid level down to the pump gives you much too high of a bottom hole pressure. People, some companies wanted, what would my liquid level be if there were no gas in there? So we came up, they came up with a term, or we did, somebody did, of what is the gas-free liquid level? And if you had a high liquid level like this, and you just grabbed all that gas and took it out, then whammo, there, there's the height that would be. And that's the gas-free liquid level. The static bottom hole pressure is the energy available to push the fluids to the well bore. Generally, you can guess at it. If, if you've worked on the lease for a while and you've had a couple of wells go down and you see the fluid level normally stands at 2,000 feet and it's a 6,000 foot well, you've got 4,000 feet of fluid in the well, makes mostly water, divide that by two, bottom hole pressure is going to be somewhere around 2,000 pounds. And that's good enough. You don't need to know whether it's 1,500 or 1,000 or 4,000. Just that's close enough. The static bottom hole pressure is equal to the casing pressure plus the liquid col gas column pressure plus the oil column plus the water column. In a static well, nothing's moving, so the gas, oil, and water have settled out. In a normal well,